All right, welcome back, YouTubers. This is Inland Northwest Native News. I'm your host, Jeff Ferguson. And I'm your co-host, Margo Hill. All right, well, we have an uh, exciting show today. We have a live interview that we're going to be doing here very shortly, but uh, we have, uh, would like to, first of all, thank you guys, and uh, we want you, to, want you to know that we appreciate you checking us out. Uh, we're here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 8.30. Uh, we're covering news and events for the uh, Inland Northwest Natives. You know, up in the Spokane area and down south to the Yakimas and Umatilla Warm Springs, over to the Colvilles, up to the Kootenays, the Coeur d'Alene's, the Nez Perce, the Blackfeet, and uh, who else? The Coeur d'Alene's. I think that's all of them. Yeah. That's all of them. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I might just have to write that down one of these <laughs> days. You know, we've been doing this for a while. This is our 40th live stream. You know, we have, uh, I think, 15 episodes up that are a full uh, one hour that from the stuff that we went out and shot. And uh, we kind of started doing this to fill in for COVID because we didn't have anything uh, to shoot because all the events, powwows, all the horse relays and OMAC and all that stuff got canceled. So we started doing this and we uh, invite you uh, to uh, chime in. We have a live feed here that we can monitor if you have any uh, comments. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to chime in. If you have comments you'd like to leave, you can leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you'd like to follow us, uh, we would like to invite you to like and subscribe to our channel, but you got to click the little bell if you want to be notified of the upcoming events um, and things that we're going to be doing. So uh, that being said, it is March Madness, and <laughs> what about them Zags? Holy cow, that game last night with UCLA was something else. Um, Man, I thought they were going to go into overtime. It was a nail biter all the way through. I know that you're a UCL uh, alum. <laughs> what were you thinking? I was like, oh, the action is happening. UCLA had the lead for quite some time, um, but just by a few points. <laughs> it was crazy. It, it, this, this has been one of the best March, March Madnesses madness that i've seen yeah. <laughs> i'm still i'm still excited you're still mad yeah my my cousin leonard boyd a you know, full-blood indian he was uh, screaming around on the kid we were having a blast it was awesome yeah put the pork roast in and we had some march madness yeah uh at our house yeah that, that was good times man a good game all the nail biter all the way through one of the lowest scoring games i had seen all season but it was pretty exciting so anyhow we have uh we better keep moving along i do have a quick announcement that I wanted to get up. I know we have a few of them, but uh, let's see. We're going to do a couple quick announcements before we get into our very, very special guest. We have out at, let's see here. Where am I at? Oh, here we go. Two Rivers Resort. Come join us. Uh, look, looking for Two Rivers Marina crew members and Two Rivers RV Park crew members. You can apply online if you know anybody that'd be interested. It'd be a great summer job. You know, you get out uh, out to the, the confluence there, the Spokane and the Columbia River, and they're looking for help. It would be, a, a, you know, just a beautiful summer. It's so beautiful out there all the time. It's, it's really nice. There is a QR code down at the bottom if you want to uh, freeze frame that or screenshot that or freeze frame. <laughs> wow, did I did I just totally date myself or what? Holy this cow. This did an 80s flashback. Freeze 80s, frame. Freeze frame. All right, so we got to go into a real quick another job announcement. We have uh, this one for Russell Brooks, Red Eagle Soaring. They have Meet the Playwrights Short Play Festival. Kaylee Catherine Salvador, uh, Montana Cypress, and Dylan Thomas Elwood with Jen Oliveris. I believe I'm saying that right. I could be saying it wrong. I've been known to say things wrong before. I'm getting pretty good at that. But they are having a, let's see here. It's a special announcement introducing our featured playwrights for, for Red, Eagle, uh, Red Eagle Soaring uh, Short Play Festival 2021. They received a wonderful array of plays from various playwrights abroad in their call for submissions for the festival in June, it was a difficult decision. Their four feature playwrights, as I mentioned before, will be uh, Montana Cypress, uh, Kayla Salvador, Jen Oliveris, and Dylan, uh, Dylan Thomas Elwood. Congratulations to all four of them. Uh, you can uh, find out more information on the play uh, 
the Short Play Festival, which will be held June 12th and 13th. That's June 12th and 13th. It's going to be done virtually. It'll be online. And we, we leave the link in the comments section below. So I wanted to get that in. We have uh, a very special guest. We're trying to uh, chime in here with, uh, or trying to, to pull up. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just kind of keep going. Can you help me get this? Sure, you should be. Okay. Uh, what do you got going? I'm trying to call Melody. Oh. Is she there? I'm she here. Answer? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. we've got to turn the video on. Like so. I think. I don't know. We can't see her. Can you refresh that? I'm trying to. It says to enable video, end this call, and start a video call. Oh, I can't hear. Yeah. I can only hear you. Okay, so we need to do a video call if you want to see me. I did. Yeah, so. Good enough. All right, well, you guys uh, kind of work on that. I have a short video here that I can run that I found that was pretty interesting. At least I thought it was interesting. See if I can pull this up. On. Here we go. Blackfeet vaccination. Yeah, this was kind of cool. Um, I'm going to go to this one. And we are going to see hmm. if we can get any audio on this one. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, we are having some technical <laughs> difficulties here. But we'll get this one right in for you. Alright. Alright. That looks a little bit better. I think we might have something up here on. Oh, the, yeah. That's. Well, it says I'm on audio call. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, there we go. Easier to the last, I could feel how much easier it was. I couldn't believe it. I felt like I lost 20 pounds. I'm walking on air. Hello. <laughs> Later this year, the Blackfeet tribe may start offering COVID-19. Good, how are you? Oh, nah, me neither. That's why I'm not, I don't know how to get you guys on uh, YouTube, right? So somebody's going to have to show me sometime so I can subscribe or whatever. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing I wanted to talk about today is the uh, the uh, NAF funded food sovereignty project. So NAF is the Native American Agriculture Fund, and that is a pot of money that uh, Native farmers got through a class action lawsuit because for decades. They didn't have access to the farm subsidies that uh, non-native farmers got. And so when they won that suit, then they put that money in a pot 
to uh, grant to um, tribal organizations that are working towards food sovereignty. And so, you know, that's through agriculture or gathering or whatever. So we applied for that grant and we received um, some funding to get going. As you know, the uh, food sovereignty movement on the Spokane Reservation has been going since time immemorial. But uh, but this funding gives us a little bit extra wiggle room to to really get some projects going. Um, so uh, naturally, us being traditionally hunter gatherers, we included a big piece of it around gathering. So you know, looking at uh, where we have access to go and gather, especially in a way that would provide a, a sort of a, a store of our foods so that people could, when they needed it, um, have a place to come and get some of our foods and then get getting people out to do that gathering. We also included some gardening because uh, the time we live in sort of calls for that. And, you know, so we're going to ask the land if it will help us grow some food to um, some garden crops. We did a community garden last year, um, not just STN, there were several different uh, uh, parts of the community that got on board with that. But we learned some things like in the community garden, people would come and they would gladly take things like strawberries and carrots and a couple of cucumbers, but some of the more um, exotic type uh, uses of some of the garden crops like beet greens, uh, we had to sort of share like how to cook that and how delicious it was and everything. So every year we plan to to add a little bit um, something new and then try to uh, learn and teach how to use some of those foods that are nutritious um, and delicious when prepared, uh, like they um, ask to be prepared, you know. So. Um, the tribe gave us some acreage down by Little Falls by that blue building. And so uh, tomorrow we're sort of kicking the the project off down there with the cultural burn. And so um, just a way to cleanse and clarify what we're doing there um, in the area that we're going to grow a garden. We're going to uh, have the fire management crew come down and help us burn it off. And so uh, if anyone wants to come down, that'll be tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we have a videographer coming in that was provided by the, um, well, I don't want to misspeak on who provided it, but uh, he's coming from Montana and where they're doing a lot of um, like work around what they call prescribed burns, which differ from cultural burns. And so, um, but he's coming to video and interview a few people. So if you know anyone like elders, especially who have memory and knowledge of our use of fire from a cultural perspective, uh, bring him down. We can also bring him back at some point to get some more uh, footage. And once he's done, he's going to produce a couple of videos for us, edit them together. And then, uh, then we'll get all of the footage. And so we'd like to keep that going. So um, keep your video camera um, cleaned off there, Jeff, Margo, so that we can collect more, more knowledge and stories. Yeah. Yeah, the community garden last year got a little bit, but we know, you know, it, it takes time. Like you said, it is a, a re-education. And then last year with COVID, you know, um, that was hard for for people to figure out. It was hard for us to figure out how to get people involved. But uh, but there is some some interest. Like I said, the movement has been going since time immemorial, and we have some really excellent gardeners on the reservation, and so finding them and pulling them in for their uh, expertise. Most of us at STN are like kindergarten learners when it comes to gardening. And uh, I have two black thumbs, which, you know, <laughs> not proud of, but, uh, but uh, the gathering part of it is really big too, you know? So like I said, figuring out where we have access and where the foods are and maybe getting some 
uh, replanting of some of our foods out there in the wild spaces and then looking off reservation for where we have access there and increasing that access through education to some of the off reservation landowners and um, agencies that that uh, are responsible for the lands. Okay, so it, it's a combination of our first foods, our roots mm -hmm. and uh, different medicines that we gathered, um, and then also a process of uh, uh, mainstream agriculture, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do uh, a little bit different than mainstream agriculture in that we want to honor all life as we're doing this. And so that means um, maybe planting a little bit of crops for the neighbors that want to come in and munch on stuff. Um, <laughs> and even the life in the soil, you know, and so we're going to do no-till gardening um, because when you, when you till that uh, causes some destruction to the the life in the soil. And so we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. That's one of the reasons why fire is such a useful tool, you know, because it preserves that life in the soil. At the same time, it'll clear off a little spot for us to, to do some planting. We have a, a, a artist as a gardener, gatherer, Jessa Ray Wheeler, and she um, sketched out what our plan is for the garden and that will be in the rawhide press later this month and uh she she just like brought the dream to life in her her sketch yeah amazing All and right. and you're getting uh tribal department support is it uh, the burn fire management is coming coming down to help you with that uh control burn yes and then preservation also is involved in looking at you know making sure that where we want to um, plant stuff and build stuff is not uh, not doesn't have you know any compromises as far as archaeology and preservation and so um, so yeah they're helping out a lot too. Wow. Well, thank you so much. What what time again are you starting tomorrow? It'll be the afternoon. So the fire guys they are busy busy and they said they'll be down in the afternoon. We didn't get a, a, a hard fast time. Spokane okay. Tribal Network will be there by 10 o'clock. And so if anyone wants to come down uh, and talk to, with the videographer or just visit about the project, um, we'll have some information there. And then when the fire guy shows up, we'll, we'll uh, get started with the burn. And so it should be a nice day. Come on down. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Wynn, for tuning in with us. Thank yeah. you. It's good yeah. to see you. You too. Bye. 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 -bye. Here's the here's the flyer for them. Uh, and yeah. So we will go right in from that into hopefully we can get this one up and going. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, let's see here. So Vaccines to tourists coming to Glacier National Park. Currently about 95% of the tribe has had their first COVID shot. Tribal leaders estimate about 75% of tribal members have received both shots and are fully vaccinated. Right now, there is only one active case of the virus on the reservation. That person is not hospitalized. By the time middle May rolls around, we probably will be at 100% fully vaccinated. And so we're looking to the future of how we're going to test. We're going to keep testing. You know, maybe if tourists come in and we still have the vaccine and they haven't got theirs and they want one, that's a possibility. Despite the recent good news, the reservation has been hit hard by the pandemic with almost 1,400 recorded cases and 47 deaths since March of 2020. Hi, Bill Johnston with me is Grant Kier.
because, uh, you know, if the FCC, they were going to auction off some of these lines. And so the tribes had to lobby and go back to Washington, D.C. to protect these little tiny carve outs. Um, the, the story is just amazing. With these, with these uh, minimal internet uh, contacts, they got their head start going so that, the, their, that their teachers could be federally compliant to continue uh, the Head Start program. And then also they had some tribal members who were working on their GED with the, with the community college, you know, 100 miles away. But they only can do that if they had it, the Internet. Um, so, you know, uh, tribal sovereignty, tribal broadband in this cyber superhighway, it's a super important issue. Uh, for our tribal communities it is and you know it's something that we've needed for so long you know i think back into the 80s when cable television came around because that's where a lot of high-speed internet goes through is through cable and it's been since the 80s that they still don't have cable out there and it's just you know it's crazy crazy to think that but so, so under uh current uh covid funding and and some of the cares act funding uh, this is our opportunity. And so we are trying to make sure in Indian country that there's honest providers, mm -hmm. that there's good people that aren't going to take advantage of tribes, that takes the money, gets it so far, and we still don't have internet. Because um, there's lots of uh, uh, spilias, swindlers out there uh, trying to take advantage of tribes. And the tribes are just desperate, um, you know, to have good internet for education, for employment. You know, we had uh, Larry Allen. Shout out to Larry Allen from the Colville uh, uh, tribe. And he's working for veterans to support veterans so veterans can have employment and employment and training. Um, and as part of that, that's that internet. Also, veterans health care um, and mental health. So Larry Allen, um, the veterans representative, he's up in Colville. Um, and I get excited, sorry, because, I, you know, broadband is very important for mental health uh, and, and health care. Yeah. And so, yeah. We call it telehealth. <laughs> and so there's a lot of people in Indian country that are working really hard on this issue. All right. Well, uh, it'll be neat to see what happens, what comes about with all this money com coming in. So anyhow, um, we need to keep moving along. We have a quick story. This one coming out of, well, this is, a, this is actually uh, an announcement for removing uh native american mascots and sports teams honored to share uh a zoom screen with indigenous matriarch suzanne harjo uh, hosted by ucla's american indian Studies center uh, tuesday march 30th so actually we missed that oh my gosh i was up far too late but anyhow it's good to see that they are doing these um yeah so we'll keep moving we have other stories too so we did that one. Oh, this one's kind of this one is the samish this is a really neat one to honor the next seven generations. And I'm not sure if we're having trouble with our sound. Oh, I got it. Okay. To honor the next seven generations, Samus Indian Nation preserves culture language by moving online during pandemic times. This one coming out March 29th out of the Seattle Times from colonist Naomi Ish Ishisaki. Word by word, the instructor shares the Samish language terms needed to express ancestral lineage. Wow. Uh, Sana, Tan for mother, Man for father, Sila, seven for grandpa, and I doubt that's a seven, um, put together, this is my grandmother. So there are some examples of this. Uh, let's kind of show some of the other photos. You can see the language and the unique characters that they use in it for the Samish in these graphics here. Why introduce yourself? This is, this, this way is important. You know, if we think about what is going on with our tribal languages, this is one of the gals that's teaching it. Um, out of the, the article, we're going to leave uh, in the comment section below. Uh, it goes on. I know we're just about out of time. I did want to talk a little bit about that because out of 29 tribes here in Washington State, I know of at least one that lost their last fluent speak speaker. They no longer have anybody in their in their tribe that speaks their language fluently, and that's very very sad. Um, we need to save the languages. We need to. It's a way of preserving a, a part of our culture that that cannot be replaced. So um, yeah, I encourage you to read this article if you get a chance. Um, beyond that, I think that's all about all the time that we have. So 
Thank you once again for joining us, and we will be back and see you on Friday.